Hi friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I want to take you on a walking tour of Longwood Gardens at Christmas. We're just going to do a walk and talk tour around the gardens and hopefully gather some inspiration for once again bringing the garden inside for the holiday season. And I have to tell you, of all the years that I've been coming to Longwood Gardens, I think this is the most spectacular year in terms of using garden ornaments on Christmas trees. So let's just get right into the tour and take a look around at everything Longwood has to offer. So we just walked in the conservatory doors and straight away you see this amazing Christmas tree made of hens and chicks. This tree has some twinkling fairy lights on it a few gold balls, and a lot of different mosses. But it's 100% made of hens and chicks. And there are these amazing spheres hanging in the entrance as well. It looks like hanging from them, we have amaranth, some dried hydrangeas in there, some air plants, and maybe some eucalyptus too. Now it definitely smells like Longwood before we even enter the main doors. Those are definitely Ziva paper whites that they're growing in the entrance this year. It looks like it's a blue Christmas here at Longwood this year. Beautiful moth orchids right as you walk in the entrance. It looks like we have some amazing salvias, pink cyclamen, pink poinsettias, and some euphorbia, which leads us down the water and to the main Christmas tree that this year is covered in hydrangeas of all things. Let's take a closer look. Now I was struck right away when I saw this tree the last time I was here because they use some really creative garden elements on these trees. I first noticed that they're using okra pods that they've spray painted gold. Isn't that a fabulous idea? They also have these amazing walnut ornaments. And I love the simplicity of these trees, just sticking to a minimal color palette. Really beautiful. Now the next Christmas tree is adorned with light pink, sage, and baby blue glass balls. But I do see some dried flowers on this tree also. I see something that I think we'll all recognize, the always wonderful star flower pods. And friends, what is this white uh, dried flower called right here? I'm drawing a blank on that. Some beautiful pine cone ornaments and acorn ornaments as well. So here is the showstopper tree. It looks like they have a lot of hydrangeas on the tree this year. And I think, let's get in closer, it looks like they've spray painted them blue, gold, and purple. Oh, that is a really good idea. They've been doing this icy blue color over here on the main Christmas tree the last few years, and I absolutely adore it. Do you prefer the traditional Christmas colors? or do you like to go with these icy blues and silvers? Here's a view looking down to the entrance where we were. So now we're in the room, which is the reason why I knew I had to take you to Longwood this Christmas, and that's because they've turned this specific area into a Christmas floral shop filled with fresh cut flowers, all kinds of floral designs that change weekly, and they even have floral gowns. Check out the amazing movement on this dress. What do you guys think this is made of? I cannot figure it out. She's behind glass, so let me try to get close for you. Even her shoes are made of flowers and her headpiece as well. Now, in case she turns into Cinderella and loses a slipper, they've created an additional pair of moss shoes for her with little succulents adorning the toe area.
So friends, this dress is made of a mixture of both dried flowers and also faux flowers. We have some preserved oak leaf and mop head hydrangeas, preserved roses, we have selau, we have some ferns in there. The berries don't appear to be real to me, but this is truly a work of art, wouldn't you say? Friends, I just wish each and every one of you could be here with me to see this in person. It is absolutely magical in this room. So here we have an area where they have a fresh cut flower arrangement being changed out every single week. I tried to look for the name of this amaryllis. It kind of reminds me of Spartacus. Let me know if you recognize it, but these are cut amaryllis. And it looks like the designer has made a grid underneath them to hold them up. A really great idea. This wreath is just wrapped in grapevine. That's a really good idea. And a big armchair made of moss. Oh, I love this tree. This is all decked out in mushrooms. A fungi tree. I see lots of grasses and mosses being used in this display. And I love the use of the poinsettias, the peperomias, the sansevieria. And then right below us are some cyclamen planted up with some, what is that frosted fern called? I can't remember. I absolutely adore how they use grasses to create these chandeliers. And they have those kind of placed on the floor here, but they also have them suspended from the ceiling of the conservatory. What a great idea. Maybe we could do that outside in my garden. Hang them from the Kusa dogwood tree. On both sides of the poinsettia display, we have these bromeliad trees. And it looks like they're using just bromeliad and I think arrowwood vine is what they're using in between those and then it looks like they have it decked out in fairy lights. I really love the simplicity of the trees they have in the orangery. They're just fresh cut trees. They have poinsettia pots stuck into the trees. And then the only other thing in them is ribbon and pine cones. A really classy look, wouldn't you say? So we definitely need to stop by every amaryllis that we see today. This beauty here is called Denver. So we'll have to make a wish list for next year. This could be really, really dangerous for my wallet. It looks like on this rotating Christmas tree, we have different roses, and I also see some Lunaria. Let's take a look at that. Are these roses real? They look real. So I just talked to someone that worked here, and they said that these roses were preserved using glycerin. So just the heads were preserved and then they were inserted onto plastic stems. So that's why they look so real. 
and it really maintains the textures of the petals when you use glycerin. So that's another activity I wanna try next year. Just beautiful. So let's travel down this walkway now and go to one of my favorite areas where I hope the amaryllis are in full bloom. On both sides of us, we have wintergreen poinsettias. Also, we have superba new glitter poinsettia, and we have winter red winter berries. And we're gonna turn the corner right by this moth orchid chandelier, and I'm gonna show you my favorite spot here at Longwood. Now, if this isn't heaven on earth, I don't know what is. So it looks like the amaryllis are just starting to open up. Up above us, we have chandeliers filled with moth orchids, Tillandsia, Spanish moss. Gorgeous. And I just love the repetition and the simplicity of the amaryllis in these pots with the branches there. I do love Longwood Christmas all lit up at night, but the gardener in me does prefer it during the day, so I can really take in all these gorgeous flowers. So down this area, we have some Weeping Norway Spruce lit in just simple white lights. Here's another beautiful floral tree where they place some begonias inside the tree. Once again, just with some lace and some pine cones. And I just love the simplicity of this idea. Is there a way that I could stick potted plants inside my tree still? These begonias are really gorgeous. Let me figure out the name. Barkos, it says, B-A-R-K-O-S. Friends, have you ever seen this poinsettia before? It's called Christmas Mouse Red, and the bracts are curved instead of pointed. I have never seen a poinsettia like that before. I really love the combination of colors that they're using here with the yellows, the reds, and the ivories. They've lit up just some holly trees on either side of us. And I do see use of the yellow twig dogwood, which I'm always struggling to figure out how to use my yellow twig dogwood in winter arrangements. So let's see how they've placed theirs throughout the garden. How about that for a window seat, friends? Wouldn't you like to see that as you're washing dishes every day? It smells amazing in this area with these oriental lilies. Friends, if you're a fan of purple at Christmas, I think these trees will bring you a lot of joy. I wanna get in close on one of these ornaments that I saw. So that looks like a wooden flower to me, but don't you think this would be beautiful with a real orchid inside of it? Here we have the largest Christmas tree that's displayed outside of the gardens. It's a 25 foot white pine with preserved magnolia leaves. Let's get in a little bit closer to see those. I also see some English ivy, and most of the ornaments are made of twine and burlap, probably to withstand the outdoor elements. It looks like some gourds on this tree, painted gold. So I think we saw most of the trees that are inside both the conservatory and Pierre DuPont's house. But now I wanna finish up our tour at my all time favorite tree. And that's the wildlife tree here at Longwood Gardens. I wanna to try to do a tree like this after the Christmas season. They've decked theirs out in all of these beautiful gourds, gourd lanterns, gourd cups filled with bird seed for the birds. 
It's one of my favorite trees always when I come to Longwood Gardens for Christmas, but this year it just seems extra special. So here it is. It has flax, millet, and broom corn that I can see just kind of tied onto the branches with twine. And then they have these beautiful gourds that they turned into lanterns. What the birds are really enjoying are these gourds that are cut and they're using just the bottom of the gourd as a bird feeder. It looks like we have some red wooden berries. I think those are black walnuts cut in half that are making the garland of this tree. I have a sneaky suspicion that this furry friend likes the wildlife tree too. Well, friends, I think that brings us to the end of today's tour. I want to wish you all a wonderful day out there in your gardens, and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.